All right, this is going to be a really quick overview of just the basic components of an FPV quadcopter, an FPV racer, acrobatic craft, pretty much all the same thing. If you have any experience in this field, this video does not really apply to you. It's really been meant for the newcomer. So right off the bat, let's start with the sizing scheme. So this size is pretty much become a standard. This is considered a 210 or 250 millimeter size. What these numbers stand for is the diagonal distance from motor center to motor center. So this particular craft is 210 millimeters. It's my own design. It's actually about 209 millimeters, so same similar class. They often put 210 to 250 classes. That's what these sizes mean. What I'm going to be building in this how-to or this review is going to be a 130 size craft. This is a frame that I got. I'm actually not going to be using this frame. I'll explain why later. But 130 millimeters, that's from motor center to motor center. You can see that's much smaller. This one's going to have 3 inch props. That one has 5 inch props. So an easy way to organize all the components of these craft are split them up into systems. So you basically have three main systems. You have a high voltage system, you have a low voltage system, and then you have your FPV system or first person view system. So first off, let's start with the high voltage system. You can see that there are four motors, and then each motor has one of these things. These are called ESCs, electronic speed controllers. This is what they actually look like without all that tape or everything on. And I'm not sure if the camera's focusing. But this is actually called the Little B ESC. This one will dish out about 20 amps at 16 volts. Um, pretty impressive with a 30 amp burst. Anyways, this has a little, this actually has a computer processor chip on there and it's actually doing a lot of processing and it's controlling the RPM of the motors. So each of these ESCs, here's an example. Um, this is uh, one of the motors of the smaller craft I'm going to be building. I have prepared it already, the motor with the ESC attached. Each of these ESCs are attached to the motors and also have a ground and a positive line coming off of them. That's for the main power gun that's going to go to the ESC and then ultimately to the motor. And then also they have a signal line and a ground line. So most people still use both lines. I personally don't believe you really need the ground line because you have this massive ground line over here. So I haven't, been, I haven't used them for a while and I haven't had any issues yet. But anyways, that's basic components of the ESC and the motor. You're going to have your ESC, which is going to receive signals from the main flight computer, and then it's going to take the power, send it to the motor. All right, so the ESCs, the high voltage ESC system, connect to a power distribution board or some sort of power distribution system. This is the common size that I use for larger crafts like this one. Um, gives you a lot of space to solder things to and get things prepared. And what I'm going to be using for this little 130 size is actually a half size board. You can see it's literally half the size. Uh, it's not really as capable of the same amount of amperage, but this little craft is not going to be pulling the same amount of amps as that big one. All right, so the next system is going to be your receiver and flight computer. The receiver, which you can see over here, this item there, it looks like this. The receiver takes commands from your controller. This is your controller. And then it sends those commands to your flight computer. On this craft, the flight computer is going to be right on top there. And the flight computer interprets those commands and then decides what you're trying to do and sends that information out to the, the ESCs that go to the motor. And that's how the thing stays in the air. So this is what the ESC typically looks like. What I have done for the smaller craft is, uh, this is actually quite large, even though it's the smaller version. Here's another version of an ESC. Um, both are equally as capable. This one probably has a little bit more range, has more robust antennas. Um, yeah, it's just bigger. So this is their smaller version, and uh, I've taken down a bit further. I, take, I took off the cardboard shell and actually to remove the pins, and uh, you can see that in this package here. So this is what I'm going to be using in the smaller craft. This is my entire low voltage system. So low voltage means that it's going to, it runs on 5 volts and you have to get 5 volts somehow to this system as well. But right here I'm going to show you the flight computer is actually this board underneath here. And then the receiver is this board on top here. So the two are actually tied together. I have removed everything off the, off the receiver that I could and I have just three wires soldered into it that go straight to the flight computer and the flight computer has four signal lines out and that's all I need. I don't need it to do anything else. This is going to go on the smaller craft. So how do we get, so these crafts typically run somewhere along the lines of 10 to 17, sometimes higher voltage. How do we get that voltage down to 5 volts to power our flight computer and our receiver? Um, what I often use on larger crafts is a separate 
power regulating chip, a little board here that you can see here. Uh, this board is not really capable of putting out a lot of power, but it will take the high voltage and knock it down to 5 volts and give, a, give you enough power, which is very little, maybe about 200 milliwatts, to, uh, sorry, 200 uh, milliamps, just enough to power your receiver and your flight computer. Um, on this mini craft, I really don't have much space, so I'm actually using a half size board that has a power regulator built in. These two are a little bit different. This one is an actual, if you know about these things, this is a switching regulator. This one is a linear regulator. This one will heat up a little bit more, but hopefully still provide the same necessary power and not burn things up. So now we know about our high voltage system and our low voltage system. The next system is the FPV system, first person view system. This system typically consists of a camera and the video transmitter. So if you look at this video transmitter, this is a kind of an older model, it's still good, and uh, it's a little bit large. This one is a little bit smaller. They both do the same thing, it's a little bit less power. I actually have one that is uh, more powerful than both of these, but just a little bit bigger than this in that chip over there. Um, if you look at this one, this is what I'm gonna be using on the smaller 130. This is gonna be the small, small, small camera that I'll talk about in just a second. And then you'll notice that the antenna on this is, it looks like a four leaf clover, and that's a common kind of antenna that we use. This is an old antenna that I made myself. And the reason for this clover shape is because this irradiates the analog signal in a very even circular pattern so that no matter what orientation your craft is in, how fast you're flying, wherever you're going, you're always radiating an even signal for your video headset to receive. So, Often what happens with these systems, and the reason why I kind of leave it on a system on its own is because it's usually its own system, it's separate from the craft, and it really has very little to do with the craft itself. Um, sometimes the video transmitter, actually often the video transmitter will power the actual camera. Other times the camera will be powered from the main board and will need other kinds of special regulatory electronics to get that working. Um, for the most part, I try to keep it really simple. I get video transmitters that will power the camera and already filter everything and get everything nice and clean and ready to go, and all I do is I plug it into the high voltage, it's straight into the battery power, and then it takes care of the rest. Um, so this one camera, this is a really, really small camera. The camera, the difference between these two cameras are, one has a very, very small CMOS sensor, and this larger camera has a better CCD sensor. So if, if you have an SLR or something, or you know about these sensors, you might think, okay, well, CMOS is a good sensor. It is in an SLR that the sensor has been highly developed for that purpose, for taking very, very high quality pictures. In this world, these sensors are developed for uh, watching really low quality security footage. And what we're actually getting out of these is about 600 TB line, which is interlaced. Uh, and the benefit of the CCD is that it just responds better to light. And you typically get a better image out of this CCD than you do out of this really low quality CMOS. Uh, this camera isn't bad but I might not like it as much as this camera, so the reason why I'm not gonna be using this frame is because it will not actually accept a camera this large. Between the props, the camera physically does not fit, as you can see. So I've designed my own frame, it's on its way, it'll be here tomorrow, and that's when I'll start building this thing. Uh, this is another example of a, another camera, again, this is an older model, these two kind of went together. And then aside from that, we have, well, Another word about the FPV stuff is about the FPV system is that these are all the components I use for my FPV. People will, all, will often add other kinds of components. One in particular is called an OSD, an on-screen display. That's usually another board or another system or another or built into uh, the power distribution board or put somewhere in the craft. Which what it does, the main use of that system is to view your battery voltage on your view of your screen as you fly. The importance of this is that these things go really fast, they draw a lot of amps, and they use a lot of power, and you often run your battery down in about one to three minutes. Um, if you're getting more than three minutes, then you can draw more power out of your battery often, and uh, it's not really the highest power craft you can get, um, at this point at least. And what I do instead is, I don't really, I haven't really had good luck with FPV sorry, with OSD boards, the on-screen display boards. So what I do instead is I use the telemetry that's actually built into my receiver already. So with two little resistors, it, the receiver will actually take telemetry information in from this little port here and actually send it straight back to my controller. 
So what it's doing already is that it's already sending its signal strength information back to the controller. So when I give it the voltage information, it's also sending that back and my controller will actually yell at me if I start getting too far away and my signal strength drops or if my voltage readout is a little bit too low or starts kind of fluctuating a little bit too much. So that's pretty much all the parts of, of a racing quadcopter or really any FPV quadcopter. Another note, we often put HD cameras on them. That's why we get such high quality footage from uh, the camera, from the, the crafts, but our FPV systems are not high quality, so we put separate cameras. And the reason for that is that these cameras, these are, this is a similar to a GoPro, it's just kind of a, a Chinese version of it. It's actually very good. It's $65 and it's about as good as a GoPro Hero 3. I would highly recommend it, the Xiaomi Yi. This is another version, it's uh, called a run cam, it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna try to put this one on the mini. I don't know if that's possible yet. But the reason why we don't fly through these cameras is because there's a delay for the video output. They will give you an HD video output, but the delay is about 2 tenths of a millisecond, and these cameras, the delay is about 20 milliseconds. So, when, and then there's more delays mixed in there too. But at about 30 milliseconds, which is what we like to fly at, at 60 miles per hour, that's about a three to five foot difference depending on where you're going, how you're going. Um, that's a pretty significant difference. That's the difference between being inside of a tree or dodging the tree. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask below. I actually have a link to my lecture that I teach classes with, from uh, in the description below. Um, I would be happy to make a technical video kind of explaining more details about each component, but they're pretty straightforward. It's a pretty simple setup. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, please don't laugh at my headset. I know it looks like a shoebox, but it actually performs really well. And uh, I hope to be putting this little guy together tomorrow and see how it performs.